So how is everybody's, is anybody on the call so far up in the middle of the night or extremely early morning? How, welcome everybody. Who gets the prize for getting up late, getting up earliest or staying up latest? For me, it's perfect at 9 a.m. So. Yeah. A few people in um, Central European time, so that's you know, early evening for you all. Well, why don't, you know, we wait a couple minutes, so why don't we get started? So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming and for your interest in data granularity, which as you'll see, is both of a specific topic and very general because it touches on so many different areas. So this is a birds of a feather presentation that's sponsored by an interest group, the Data Discovery Paradigms Interest Group. But again, as I'll say, this is not only about data discovery, this is about a, a realm of areas. And Ray and my colleague, Raina Jenkins, and I will be presenting this. We are the co-chairs of a task force of this interest group that's been working and also the proposed co-chairs of a new working group. And the reason why it says your name here is that we're seeking a third co-chair who is outside of North America because we are both in different countries, but in North America and would love to have a more diverse leadership of the group. So uh, welcome, just some general Zoom reminders. Again, the session is being recorded by Standard and we encourage everybody to mute when you're not speaking. There's a shared Google Notes doc that we ask you to put your name in on the attendance list. And then now and or later, you can express interest in possibly being part of this working group. If you know for certain you want to be part of any working group that comes out of this, please put a yes. But a lot of times people are exploring different potential places to invest their time in RDA. So if you're not sure, it's very, we're very welcome to have you put down a maybe and then you can circle back and we can talk more. So, Today, the, what we're gonna do over the next 90 minutes is we're gonna give an introduction on how we came to this point, what we mean when we're talking about data granularity, then have some breakout groups and you know, depending on the, so welcome everybody as you're joining, depending on the size of the groups, we'll see how many breakouts we have. We will talk about data granularity as a concept in small groups and report back. Then we will present a draft of a case statement for an RDA working group in this realm and then have a second round of, of breakout groups to talk about a potential working group and how it might deal with granularity in different areas and then have some discussion and wrap up. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Raina who's gonna give just an introduction and a reminder to what we mean by data granularity and how we got to this point. And I will advance the slides for you. Great, thank you, Katie. Um, so um, this data granularity concept um, comes up over and over and also it's also a question is even what is meant by data granularity now there has been work in this task force already to um, look into some definitions like uh, the data a data set a data set collection um, granules or data set items um, so all these components but um, there's actually still not a complete consensus so um, this is still an ongoing question about ex what exactly is data granularity. And so while we're, you know, reaching consensus, we still need to kind of work on that exact terminology a little bit more in the group. Um, but then we're also really looking at how does data granularity factor into data infrastructure, um, mainly from a data repository or curator perspective, but, but we have to keep in mind how it affects the end users as we go. Um, and then what are the ways that we're defining the boundaries of these data sets and collections of data sets? So there's been so many ways um, that I've seen out there, um, geographical extent, um, I'm not gonna list these all, but um, a whole different array of uh, options that people are using. Um, and you know, if I expand the different domains of research, uh, this list is just going to get longer, um, but these are some of the ways I've come across. Um, and then really does consistency matter? Do we really need consistent approaches from one domain to the next um, or within a domain? And what, what would be the repercussions if we don't? So these are the kind of questions um, that arise, but there's, there's, there's a lot more questions and that's the this kind of 
um, questions that we'll be grappling with, but also collecting more and trying to come to terms with um, all of that. So next slide. Uh, Katie, next slide. Um, so a little bit of history. Um, now this has come up um, in the past through the various uh, RDA members, especially within the um, in the 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 data par discovery paradigms and interest group. But um, and and with this task force has been running now for a little while, but with different members at, uh, throughout the past. Um, I think for about a year and a half already. Uh, there has been some drafts and, and some uh, questions uh, developed over that time, um, but we really need to mature that and get uh, more complete community input to that. So um, these previous plenaries have started to explore um, what the task force has been looking at already and there has been quite a bit of interest, but it was really the plenary last um, spring that was also remote, where we started to really conge congeal and, and decide that there really does need to be a working group and that we should really go forward to develop a case statement to formalize that. And so uh, we worked over the summer a little bit with the task force to start to um, uh, figure out the pathway towards that case statement and that what will be kind of what we'll be focusing on today but also just trying to explore the questions a little bit more and try to uh, extract some of your inputs uh, as we go so I've just listed a few of the names of the people that yeah we've listed the names of the people that were involved over the summer um, next slide yeah so here's just an illustrative example from my experience with uh, data sets uh, and collections, but um, this is obviously just one, one representation. And so, but I'll just kind of conceptualize what's going on here. So we have uh, these three kind of concepts, the collection, the data set, and the granule, and really where to assign them is still an, a question mark, but um, I have a concept of you have a, a cruise that has um, like a large vessel that goes out to sea and, and collects data from the ocean in the form of ROV dives. So these are remotely operated vehicles that uh, go into the ocean and can uh, collect data um, with instruments that are mounted on the platform. So for instance, you'll have a video camera um, that will accumulate specific files um, and you would also do post-processing on those, those video files to get transcodes and things like that for video streaming online. Um, you might have a conductivity temperature depth instrument to capture that ba those basic ocean parameters and those come in again in individual files and post-processing and derived products. Um, you might collect samples of organisms like sponges and you might also take sediment samples and you might also do a whole host of other things but these are some, um, some parts of this, this giving some broad overview of the types of data you might find. So then with these samples, you might also want to register them. Um, like with sediment samples, you would maybe want to represent those with IGSN. IGSN does have its own concepts of collection, samples, and, and, and subsamples. So those concepts come to play. As well with the sponge, you might want to register that in the Ocean Biodiversity Information System, which again has um, this concept of relating a sample to the events. Uh, and it could be parallel um, considered like to be a similar concept like collection data set granules. So um, these are kind the kinds of questions we need to kind of look at and across domains, not just in this kind of ocean example. But this also raises other questions like, do collections need to be hierarchical like I have in this case, but I also have ways to represent this that are not hierarchical or you might wanna look at um, you know, all sponges that we've collected on all expeditions and maybe that's a collection, not just in this hierarchical form. Um, what about the data sets that people derive from a fusion of data sets that might come from all different collections? Um, what are the preferred ways to allocate the collection metadata and PID information? Um, is that simply just a normal data set, uh, data site DOI or is something different? Um, and how do we describe these relationships? Now I know there's related identifiers, but we might want to might want to articulate better which relationships to, uh, to use in order to create those. Um, so there's all these kinds of questions that come up. And so this is just to meant to get the juices flowing to think about your own cases. So let's go to the next slide. So we're going to start with a breakout. And this is just meant to um, 
get your head, start to wrap your minds around the different situations that you experience and how this, these concepts of collection, data sets, subsets come up. Um, so in these little breakout groups, just introduce yourselves to one another, um, first of all, and then, then think about a data set that's, um, or collection that you've recently been involved with in some way. Now, I say published only because at that point you've grappled with some of the implications of the choices, but if it could be something that you're actively curating or working on publishing as well, because then you are still thinking about those concepts. Um, but think, but uh, um, describe to the group what is that collection data set and the subset um, granules that are within that. Um, and what are some of the pros and cons about the decision making that uh, were made in that characterization, like on how data would be accessed or discovered or how the citation was applied. So things like that, just, just start to think about what, what, what drew those decisions, um, what led to those decisions or what might have led to those decisions. Um, and just document that in the Google Doc um, that's been, that you're all uh, signed in for attendance. And there's placeholders there for the breakout groups. And then um, just assign someone to report out. Now we'll only give about a minute each group to report out. Now we actually um, might, I'm, I'm going to be making, I guess, I think five groups is still, uh, still works. Well, maybe I'll, let's cut it back to four just because of the number of people. Yeah, um, I, we weren't sure how many people to expect. And I yeah. put the placeholders there, they begin at the bottom of the second page of the document. Yeah, so maybe, actually maybe even three groups. Um, given the numbers. So let's do three groups and then we'll just uh, report back one to, one to two minutes each uh, group. And then that'll just start, hopefully, I hope, hopefully we have a spectrum of domains here too, so that we see different kinds of examples coming up. But um, is, that, is that clear? Yeah, any questions from anybody? Okay, I don't. No see. questions, I saw a thumbs up. In the chat or anything either? Okay. Oh, I would. Um, we know that not everybody's going to turn their camera on all the time, but it would be nice to turn it on the small groups because it'll be also be a way of getting to know each other. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to set these uh, three groups up, um, and you'll be automatically uh, assigned to one group. Um, and here we go. Sorry, I'm just uh, making sure it's the right amount of time. <laughs> okay. We're up to 15 people now, which is great. It's a good size. So I hope. Okay. People so you now should be having a pop up that says it's invited you to to participate in the room. And Raina, I'm going to go ahead and join room three. Sure. I might stay here in case people decide to leave the group and have questions. So I'll stay here. There's three of you that haven't gone to the group. I'm not sure if it's because you're not sure how to do that, but um, you should have received a pop up. But just let me know in the chat if um, you need help.
So everyone should be coming back now. I gave you like one or two extra minutes because I saw a flow of typing and I didn't want to interrupt and I figured we have less groups, so we're okay. Um, just give everyone a minute to come back. Everyone's still typing away, I can see. Okay, well, I think we're all back. <laughs> okay, so now I just wanted to do just a quick report out with each of the groups, just some of the key concepts or highlights that were um, came up and then um, we'll carry on to the next part. But, um, so maybe just, can we have someone from group one uh, give some summary? I think I'll jump in, in, in unless someone else wants to do that. Um, yeah, so we discussed um, data queries uh, that were got provided at DUI, um, which was quite interesting. And we had some discussion about uh, what data should be shared and what data should receive a DOI and um, would it even be possible for granularity levels to receive a DOI? And um, if a data set underlying the publication is shared, uh, is that enough or do we need more sharing? And um, data underlying the publication makes it more manageable to cite it, more findable perhaps, but then you also don't have access to all the data and um, yeah, that might have negative implications for reproducibility. And I think that's a very quick summary. Okay, thank you. Please feel free to jump in. Okay, um, so can I get someone from group two? Brigitte, Andrea, Luke, Siri. Okay, um, um, so we, 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 we um, talked about some, some issues that occur with social science data and also with uh, uh, climate data and we, we saw that we had very similar problems, and we also discussed uh, um, that there are different granularity um, problems depending. You know, one one you know, of course, is, is, is storage, but for storage, it's not so much of a problem, but it 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 it, um, it pops up um, when you are looking at the user needs and and how they uh, um, what what kind of granularity level they're interested in and uh, then we started you know talking about heterogeneity and uh, um, but then of course the breakout was over <laughs> so I think I forgot a couple of things so feel free to step in well it's nice that there were some common ground between social sciences and the and the climate data um, you know so that gives some um, yeah yeah we had exactly the same problem that uh, if you go too close, you have too many results. If you go too far, you don't see what you need. Exactly. Okay. This and then it was just exactly the same problem. Um, and yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, that's 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 encouraging for for looking towards more global, at least high level um, guidelines that would fit. Yeah. Um, group three. Bridget, Tom. Tomas was going to present. Okay. So, sorry, I didn't activate my uh, arm. So uh, yes, we I think that uh, we found out that there's two way to look at things uh, from the user's user's perspective. Um, someone said that uh, she had. Uh, tried to uh, to access a corpus of linguistic data and had to download uh, an entire data set but uh, data set by data set to have the entire corpus and then query locally which was cumbersome so uh, it's uh, it would have been easier to be able to download the, the large set at once on the other hand 
uh, to have a tool uh, to have a larger data sets uh, penalizes uh, the description of the data set and uh, if you are well I would try take it from the beginning um, well if you if you don't have uh, yeah um, and on the other hand, on the repository side, uh, and when you publish data, um, the, the, there was one project that came up with uh, uh, a variety of, uh, of data and uh, of, uh, of possibilities to, uh, to, to, to cut uh, data sets into this, this data. And uh, the question uh, remains of the, 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 the right level uh, of um, yeah, for, so for of cutting that for for cutting data sets. Uh, sorry, the message vocabulary here. Um, and uh, okay, I'm just um, gonna cut in for a second. But it does seem like um, th from the user's perspective, they kind of want the kind of both the benefits of both worlds, right? So. Um, whatever system we want to come up with, it should be flexible such that we can provide the access to the data at sort of variant, uh, variance, varied degrees of granularity depending on the use case. So different portals um, might have to consider different means, but that means the underlying granularity has to be amenable to those different sorts of options, right? So that's something we need to consider both as repositories, but in mind of the user's needs, right? So uh, the last idea that came up was that uh, maybe the, um, the problems with uh, uh, coming with a tool um, that uh, with data sets that would be uh, defined at a level of granularity that would be too uh, too large or too uh, too low uh, could be um, counterbalanced. By um, by a better uh, account of file descriptions and file metadata, uh, which is incidentally the the way that uh, DataVerse has been recently improved. Uh, I mean on file metadata and um, the discovery of data also uh, has to be uh, tackled at this level. Okay. Um, so that's getting into the sort of the granule aspect of things. Okay, um, so now we're going to move on. Uh, so now we have some juices flowing, some, some thoughts around what are the pros and cons. So that's great. So pass it on to Katie. Great. So I am um, pasting in the chat a link um, link to our draft case statement. So where we are, and we'll have an image of this later. Is we are in, in a process of looking for informal feedback on our case statement. And then later, we will go through the formal RDA proposal process to have formal review of the case statement. So the idea is that we're proposing, we'd love to discuss with you and get your feedback on, is to have a working group work uh, in a focused way on this project, on this concept. And again, as we've talked about, the concept could touch on many different things. So we're focusing on the working group producing two main things. And I won't necessarily read through this in, in detail, but the idea is the two deliverables would be a set of, sorry, I can't, I can't highlight because it'll advance slide, a set of use cases and a guidance document to help various different data professionals dealing with any arena of the data infrastructure environment think about ways that they might approach data granularity, approach their own use cases, and think about how they might make, as came out in our working group, some deliberate choices about the levels of data granularity they'd like to support and how to be thinking about that. So it wouldn't necessarily be the working group would tell people what levels of granularity to support per se, it would be to equip, equip them with ideas of common ways of talking to make these deliberate decisions. And again, we have been exploring questions ourselves as a task force, and there are lots of still questions that the group would deal when thinking about what are the different kinds of use cases and what levels of granularity lend themselves to that, how that should be presented by the user, what are the relationships between these different levels, 
And a topic that has come up a lot is the topic of terminology. That if you'll think back to the case that Raina, the example that Raina presented, you know, what is it that we call a collection or a data set or a granule? I think those terminologies are different and having a common language might help in infrastructure providers think about how to enhance interoperability, at least if you're using a similar terminology. And the value that we think that this can bring is, as we were saying before, granularity cross cuts a number of different areas in the research data infrastructure environment. So things like discovery, you want to be able to discover data at the level of interest that you have access, that example that we talked about in our working group of having to download more than you need. Interoperability, thinking about how to align levels of granularity used in system, how that relates to processing and quality control of your data sets and also analysis. And another area is the issue of citation and credit. And we mentioned earlier, Raina mentioned the idea of DOIs and at what level can you assign, for example, a DOI and give credit. And these are themes that we've pulled out in the case statement and also themes that we will talk about in the next set of breakout groups. We'll have groups that will each talk about these themes. So we'd like to think about obviously the importance of engagement with adjacent RDA groups. So what we did as a task force is really looking to not only not be, you know, work adjacent with a number of different groups that have done work related to this area and have an inherent relationship with it. So what we did is we want to have complementary relationships and to be able to build on the work that other groups have done. So we did an initial review and identified 23 RDA, either working or interest groups, that seem to have a really significant either existing or potential relationship with this concept. And then we would propose to, through the working group, have structured ways of working and collaborating together with those other groups. And the draft work plan, again, you can read the details on that link, is that we would identify use cases, look at what's happening within the environment in terms of infrastructure providers and how they're dealing with data granularity, what constraints we might have, to do a survey of the community, the RDA and beyond, for their existing approaches, needs, and issues. So an extension of the kinds of things that we've been talking about in this session today. And then we would draft a guidance paper and those use cases, share it for feedback and finalize it. So that's sort of the, the broad swath of the process and all working groups are considered to think about adoption, not just within RDA, but beyond RDA managers. So we've outlined a number of different stakeholders that we wanna think about how this could serve them and how to roll out adoption and how to engage those communities, not just internally within the RDA. So I know so this, this case statement is linked from the chat. It's linked from the abstract of the session. And some of you, you know, some of you, if you were sort of extra prepared, you may have looked at it ahead of time. We really encourage you to share with us your informal feedback for the next few weeks. And we have a few minutes now where you can just sort of give your initial reactions to what you've heard, what you may have seen, what you, know, what you think we could be doing better or are there gaps we're missing? So we're happy to take a few minutes and just have some initial responses. And I, and we, I think we're a small enough group that people can just unmute yourself. Let's try that without having to raise the hands. We'll see. Yeah, and there was actually already a comment there by Luke. So, and this is actually a great comment that I've thought about too, um, which is about um, that access is also about publishing data progressively, not waiting for a whole data set to be ready. So I actually was talking about this with Katie the other day and how, um, you know, my from a curator perspective, you need to kind of, you want to kind of deposit or publish the data set. And so if you're waiting for parts that um, you might want to have different granularity, your granularity is going to impact your ability to publish at, at, at what time. Um, and also, it might, this might, if you're going to be publishing the data in increments, maybe that becomes then a dynamic data set. So there's different thoughts there. But definitely. Yeah, and that's why the RDA groups looking at versioning are on our list, because that's interrelated in some ways. Uh, uh, other thoughts? 
I think it makes sense the way that it's um, set up, and I like the way there's a f like focus on both data going in and data coming out almost. Because in our small group that we just had, that that came up almost immediately. We had two separate use cases of almost defining a data set in the same kind of way. That's the thing with the DOI on it, but one defined by um, okay, this is what constitutes a data set when you put it, for example, into a repository, and the other one about actually a search term defining a data set which you can then build on. Um, and so, yeah, I I did like the fact that was built into the case statement. Um, I had one question around, so one of the main outputs, I think, in the next six months was around the survey, whether any supporting analysis would be useful in that way. There's quite a few tools out there which could be used to, for example, support that kind of survey into um, particular behavior to see not just what people are sort of saying they're doing, but also what is out there. Can you give an example of what you mean by that? So, I mean, one example I was thinking is would be interrogating repositories to see what levels of different um, granules are actually available, either through metadata or, for example, looking at collections, uh, files within collections in particular repositories. Okay, so basically the kinds of questions, you're, you're thinking about certain kinds of questions. So yeah, definitely we'll need to kind of construct the survey and, and we might even need to have different questions for different um, respondent types, uh, like repositories versus a researcher. Um, and certainly if you have ideas, that would be helpful for you to be in that working group. Yes, we'd love, we'd love all your help. And I also think that what I hear from you, Graham, is that take different realms, you can, you know, ask questions or one could examine a series of different repositories. We as a work information about how they deal with ask the staff there. Yeah. Different approaches versus unmediated. Sorry, with brilliant timing there, my uh, connection seems to have just gone <laughs> very bad, but I think I got most of what you said. Oh, did you? Oh, I just thought I heard you suggesting unmediated data collection approaches that we could look doing outside of which I think is a great idea. Any other comments or thoughts? You can also type into the Google Doc or uh, the chat. <laughs> So there was a oh, and I, I just heard that um, someone else was having trouble hearing me. So if, if it's a system, I can stop my video. Okay, so I'll just acknowledge that Luke uh, added into the chat here about um, what is our opinion about publishing a DOI um, for a big data set, which is the result of merging smaller ones. Uh, this would duplicate data, but help users sound like good practices. And actually, yes, I've, th I've thought about this myself too. So I kind of think of maybe this big data set as being a collection of the other data sets. But when you say uh, use data site, um, um, it's basically getting a new DOI, but there's relationships where you can say is part of or it, um, or belongs to these kind of relationships. So that, that's something I'm looking at doing too. And so these are exactly the kind of constraints we wanna look at with the registries and what are the options for the relationships or um, the terminologies that they're using. So that's exactly, yeah, in line with what we need to look at. And that, that's covered by when we look at the constraints as well. You'll see I've turned off my video because it does seem like maybe there are issues. So hopefully that will be a little bit better. And then I hear a couple of other comments in the chat regarding data usage statistics. And if you want you turn on your audio, please do. Relating to how those what regarding, statistics. Yeah, re regarding usage stats, I believe that they're based on the level that you have chosen for the for the data set already. So. Siri could 
just explain a little bit more? Well, that was a sort of a random thought um, that um, with popular data sets, uh, you can uh, have you know machine um, analysis of the access patterns. So, for example, if, if you provide a subsetting service and people often request a certain type of subset, you can start making that a, um, a separately, you know, uh, inventoried, um, whatever you want to call it, you know, unit that that people could subsequent other users could subsequently discover. Yeah, that kind of it's kind of a opposite way of thinking of something I've thought about. Um, where I've been thinking about well, how and we've mentioned in this task force before is like how how does the level of granularity influence the the metrics of usage that one would get? Uh, and I know that there's also the data usage metrics working group, which of course is one that we would have to work with. Um, but of course, the meaning of these. Um, these numbers of downloads and whatnot are hard to interpret, especially across uh, institutions that have different ways of establishing granularity within an institution. If it's consistent, okay, there's some meaning there maybe, but across institutions, very difficult if if one group is assigning DOIs at a very different notion of granularity than another. Um, so. Yeah, and I will I will add to that, and then um, in the interest of time, we'll move on to our next step. But all comments are welcome, so please keep them coming. I speaking of the data usage metrics group, I sat in on their meeting a couple days ago, and we were sort of recognizing the connection here. And one of the big themes that I took out from that meeting, and may, some of you may have sat in as well, is that what usage statistics that you get oftentimes people have been driven by what the system can do but increasingly groups really want to think about what really are the right ways to measure the value of this data is it downloads is it something else and that the idea and i think it relates to our concept of what should drive what we measure you know are the granules driving the usage statistics or are the usage statistics driven by something else or vice versa so I think there's a lot of interrelated themes and thinking about what, what's the end goal they were really talking about. So any final things people wanna say before we move on to the next topic? Okay, so the next topic is the next breakout group. So we're gonna do this in a very similar way You'll be randomly assigned. We would have loved to have let you choose it, but we did, that wasn't technically capable. So right now we're gonna break out and talk. I talked about these various different topical areas that are relevant to data granularity. I was just talking about citation, discovery access, interoperability, and curation. And what we're gonna do is randomly assign you all to these to five groups. So you'll probably have about three or four people per group. And then for each group, think about what comes to mind that's relevant for that particular theme as it relates to granularity, and particularly as it relates to what the working group might want to do. So we'll give, again, we'll give 10 minutes to talk, and then when we come back, one minute per group. So if there aren't, so raise your hand if you have any questions, but otherwise, thank you to Raina, who will send us off into our groups. And again, you'll have designate somebody to report back. Okay. Seems like no questions, so I'm, I'm opening the rooms.
So, Brigitte, you came back. I'm just wondering, <laughs> is there issues? Uh, so I came back because there was only one other person with me and he was kind of non-responsive. So I thought yeah. I'd come back to you. And... OK. Um, yeah, there's two other people that are supposed to be here, the uh, Sergio and Swati, but I don't know. Um... I, I am able to not join the group for some reason. I got the link, and then it's not there anymore, the, the invitation. I don't know how it's assigned. Um, I think it was randomly. It, it was randomly assigned, but I, I can't, I don't have a way to like do anything. So is there a way to join the group like manually or something? Um, it says that you are just not joined. So I'm not sure what you did with the message. I don't have any means to force you to go there. Um, I, I, I saw this pop up where it said that you are invited to join in this breakout room. And then I clicked it and then somehow it brought me back here. Uh, you can also click on breakout room in the um, here and then. Uh, click oh, yeah, on okay. mm -hmm. yeah. But I, okay. I didn't want to spend 10 minutes all alone with someone who doesn't talk. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'd go back. Here. Which, which oh, why don't we stay here? Doing? Why don't we stay here and work on that topic? Because then yeah, we have the yeah, cool. okay. I, I, I would also then stay here. Okay, let's stay okay. here and we're, we can all do di discovery together. <laughs> oh yeah, that's awesome. Because I was actually like, oh, discover. That's great. I like that. <laughs> sure, let's just do it here. Yeah. Okay. So, so we have five minutes and uh, five and a half minutes. Okay. Ah, okay. Um. Discovery. So, um, yeah, the main problem is there. Like, uh, what what kind of granularity level do you offer to the users? Okay. Yeah. So, um, what what okay what kind of just for my my um, clarity, I'm a rather uh, new uh, in this field. So this this discovery is is related to findability or something, right? Or yes. like Find how to. Yeah, I would I would equate it to findability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, like, uh, how do you how do you present to the users that there might be other granularity levels that they might be interested in? Like something like a oh, okay, so this is the thing that you're looking at right now, but this is the higher level thing, and these are the lower level things. So how do you uh, present these sorts of interconnections? I think that's another. Um, so I'll, I'll just express that as the great relationships of granularity. Yeah, the, the relationships of granularity. I think these are the, the two most basic questions there. Yeah. And then, um, like I, I know at our own institution, um, it's also not just about like the granules themselves, but um, what are like the filters and, um, types of queries that you enable them to yeah and the with. problem is then that when you have very low granularity then you have a lot of duplicates so you have to have some sort of duplicate elimination ideally ideally um, um just to to get a grip of what you're seeing right um yeah i think the filters thing and also like the navigation and and also du duplication because uh, as I said, at some granularity levels, uh, duplication is really like a big issue. Okay. Um. And of course there's this thing like, how do you deal with incomplete metadata? Mm. So are you trying to deduce things or not? Or are you, you know, are you, are you when you know there should be another granularity level, do you, you know, alert the people to it? It's the sort of thing. This is also something like, I mean, when you have a data set, you know that there are probably going to be variables in there, but you don't know them because you don't have the metadata. So you um, suddenly on certain ways of looking at the data, um, badly curated data just disappears. Yeah. And that's kind of unfair because I mean, uh, it might be high quality data. Okay. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, from, from, so I'm a climate scientist and I, I, I just have this experience that sometimes um, 
the data is actually also in a way duplicated. So there, so for for instance, there are like different climate models, and they just call the variables by a different name, or maybe it's in a different, little bit different resolution. So it's essentially the same thing, just described in a little different way, and that mostly creates a lot of confusion. So this is. I don't know if this is considered at all as a part no, of the granularity problem because this is uh, just that you have a little bit too much stuff to sort out. Yes, and yeah. then there's a, and then of course there's a thing that we try to use like a page rank sort of algorithms to to find out uh, which data sets are the most popular. But mm -hmm. then immediately the first question uh, popped up: the, Okay, so you know that this data set is popular. Does that mean that the subunits are also popular? Does it mean that the level above is also popular? So how does this relate? That's also like a completely open question. Okay, yes. so how, how does the popularity? Yeah, so, so if you if you have like a, um, a relevance metrics, uh, which are pure, for example, by citations, so, um, um, or if you want to do ranking, so, and, and you have like, okay, this is important, um, which current, to which granularity level do you assign this and does it transfer to the other granularity level? And this is also something that I, I don't really have a good intuition about. So I, I, I kind of think like if there's a data set and this one thing inside the data set is very important then probably the data set itself is important as well. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, phrase that as a question like how does the popularity yeah. popularity of certain components of the granularity structure propagate to the others is, is that yeah a way of saying what you yeah yeah no that that's perfectly that that you you phrase it more elegantly than i do okay yeah um yeah but these are like i think the, the core question that we have to ask if you want to design a system that that actually it does provide good um data discovery yeah and, and your your presentation yesterday actually uh, about the social sciences and the ways that people were um looking for data those kind of studies i think are really impactful in thinking about um this question so maybe i'll just put a, a note here that previous uh, data discovery should be leveraged um, as inputs such as those presented in the I IG. Um, yeah, was the bioscience is one that was useful. Yeah, there was, yeah, there was also one, and, and there is actually a couple of other studies that did similar things, um, looking at uh, user needs and also how, how people, um, um, so, so for example, the, the graphs that I showed about how difficult data search is, uh, it, it matches almost identical to a survey that has been done before. Um, and, 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 and these also cases, so I'm, I'm not the first person who has ever thought about doing that. It's, uh, um, 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 but there's like a whole set of, of literature concerning that. Yeah, so maybe like we need to kind of just collate that information, and contextualize that in this context. Um, Okay, so the, the groups are all going to be closing in a, in a minute here. Um, so did one of you feel comfortable to report out uh, since I'm not sharing this? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm the only one who is actually an original member of group one. I, I, I should probably do the reporting. <laughs> okay, I'll leave you to do that. <laughs> Thank you. So this is, I, I have to say, this form is very dynamic. So I actually intended to write some text and I absolutely don't have the time to do that. <laughs> because oh, do you mean into the Google Doc or? No, 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 I, I, I mean, I, you know, like you go to conference and you think like, oh, what can I do also? Uh, and, and, and this is so action packed here that uh, I, I didn't get much work done. And I, uh, I want to say that as a compliment to how very dynamic and wonderful this session is. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah.
So we have Katie back to take over again, right? Yes, welcome back. So we have, um, we actually have a good, so we're doing, we're on track with time. Um, so we're gonna take about five minutes and just do sort of one minute brief report out from each group. So we'll just go in numeric order and start with group one. Um, so uh, one of the things that we first talked about is that um, what is discovery? So what do we mean by discovery? And we said that it's about user trying to find data. So it's very closely related to findability. And uh, the question that we were asking is like, what kind of reality do you expose to the users? This is very much um, close to what we argued before. Like, do, do you show them the data set? Do you show them the content of the data set? Do you only show them like groups of data sets? Um, and also, how do you present the, um, um, the relationship between the granularity? So like, do you say like, okay, this is part of a larger thing and this data set also contains all these subunits. Um, and then, of course, where are the filters and the navigational tools that we can use to, to um, uh, that tie into this granularity? And uh, then we talked a little bit about how, how duplicate, so, so how you get all these duplicates, like um, where, where data sets are not like exactly hierarchical, but are like um, almost the same. And, but you have a lot of them and then you, and then all the content of the data set also duplicate. And then you have like really a lot of stuff, which is more or less identical. And um, that makes it really hard for a user to find anything at all. And um, then um, um, I brought up the point, like, so if you, if you use, um, a page rank sort of algorithm where you go like, okay, I, I want to know which one is the most popular data set. And I have some information that this part of the data set is, is popular. Um, how does it translate into um, the overlying structure and uh, the underlying structure? Um, and uh, what, uh, what does that mean for, for that? So if my data set is popular, are the variables inside the data set also popular and so on and so forth. Um, and then we talk a little bit out about um, uh, previous work um, that has been done by a variety of authors on that topic and that we should you know, try to um, read a bit more about that. So yeah, that's group one. Thank you. And who's speaking for the access group, group two? Hello, it's me again. Hi. Uh, yes. Uh, so we got a bit sidetracked, so I'm going to keep it very short, I think. Um, but we, we saw some issues with uh, if you give everyone the same access level to all the granularity levels, uh, it's going to be uh, a very snippered, uh, uh, lots of information spread everywhere about all the granularity. Um, so it would be good to have some recommendations in the sense that, um, for example, higher up, um, identifiers for data can be found through uh, searches uh, using data sites, uh, Google uh, data, um, B2 find, for example. And then when you get into the discipline specific data repository, that only on that level, it would be possible to go into granularity because otherwise it's just too much information. Um, and uh, we also discussed some discipline specific uh, differences that we would have uh, between, for example, social sciences and climate. Uh, and someone is moving the text uh, in the document. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, that, that might differ per discipline. So we need to take that into account in the recommendation. And I think that's the summary. So I hope that made sense. Okay, I've, I've turned off my video again, just in case my audio was fuzzy like before. Um, group three on interoperability. Hi, so what we, we talked about a few different things. We talked about how um, the different terminologies for different levels of granularity affect interoperability if um, there are different words or meanings or understandings of what those terminologies are. Uh, we talked about how um, 
the the level of granularity anticipated by the producer of the data or that was needed by the producer of the data um, might not be the same as that of um, somebody who wants to consume the data potentially from a different domain or for a different purpose. So it's not always possible to anticipate what the best level of granularity is for interoperability and reuse. Um, we talked about how uh, it's also the infrastructure, the repository infrastructure has a big uh, impact here and how an older infrastructure might not be equipped to, to deal with mass quantities of highly granular data. And um, if uh, multiple in infrastructures are in play and interoperability, different levels of capability can impact the interoperability. Um, and then we talked about uh, the what the question of DOIs and identifiers and how that uh, how it's not always clear what the best place or what what um, where to assign the identifier on a highly granular data set and whether the uh, the identifiers themselves tend to drive um, decisions about how granular or not to make your data available. Um, I think that those are the high, high points of what we discussed. Well, and that's a perfect segue to group four, which is around sort of citation and we talked a bit about usage metrics. So, so um, I'm going to try and summarize, but I do hope um, the um, co-participants jump in uh, to say anything about to, to anything I might have missed. Um, um, so the, the, the point of citation is, well, I, I said attribution is really the essential part, you know, what, you know, that, that, um, that you're tying, but it's reproducibility also, reproducibility also. So you want to make sure the producer of the data gets credit. Um, that's the sort of a high level, you know, motivation for citation or maybe the original, but now it's very much part of open science and being in reproducibility. Um, uh, but then we got to the fact that um, reproducibility is not guaranteed, uh, even if you, um, I mean, uh, it's very much a function of, of you know, granularity, right? And, and that granularity, the, what's delivered from a repository um, might be, have been, um, if, you know, a subset of the overall collection based on the user requests, right? And so um, citing just the collection isn't good enough. You have to cite, uh, and maybe that can be in the text of the journal article, but you know, ideally in the citation itself, it's, it, it somehow specifies, well, if, if there's a DOI associated to the level of granularity that you're using, then all's rosy. But if you, once you get the data set, do some other um, level of selection out of it, you know, then you know your citation, you know, no longer applies to the particular part of the data that you use. Of course, that's the, the trade-off between what you write in your, you know, in your um, results versus what citation you use. Um, and then I brought the fact that there was a whole RDA group that developed dynamic data citations, so that it was possible to actually um, reproduce the request that delivered the granule, that, the data that you worked with, right? Um, and that, of course, requires persistence of the infrastructure that delivered that data. Um, OK. Uh, ensure links to RDA groups on citation and versioning. We, as we go forward, that's obvious that we need to do that. Um, um, and then there was the notion uh, tied to user met, usage metrics, right? So, so uh, off, repositories often you know, look um, you know, do web searches for DO citations based on DOIs. Um, so, uh, or, you know, or text citations like, you know, NSIDC looks both for the string that they recommend, um, you know, or require be used uh, inside the data set if they use it or the DR now, now it's, it's DOIs. So, you know, general search engines are used to look for those things to, uh, to come up with usage metrics. Um, so, right, again, um, the level of granularity that's 
used in describing the data set becomes important because that determines um, sort of the metrics. Like if you have a collection that is actually a, diver a diverse set of you know, different contributors, you want the granularity to reflect the particular you know, element of that that was produced by somebody in particular, so they get credit. Uh, higher levels be sufficient for source attribution. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Citation and use, in, maybe whoever said that next to last bullet can clarify. Um, I'll yeah, just quickly okay. do it and then turn it over to the next group, just in the interest of time that we were talking about how our topic was citation, but it relates to usage metrics and how those levels of the levels of granularity may be less of an issue for citation and attribution and more of an issue for usage metrics. So that's our group. And now Fotis is working out on curation and analysis. Yeah, hi all. Um, so um, I'll, I'll give a very brief report. So we bounced out a few um, thoughts about questions, issues, constraints, et cetera, about uh, data granularity for curation and deposition of data. So one of the uh, most interesting points that sort of came out is that the level of granularity uh, that actually motivates researchers to share the data is what it's the most important part. So basically ensuring motivation uh, for researchers, low, low barrier, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that would be the, the, the primary like, let's say, output. Another interesting point is that um, uh, people might not um, know what would be the best level of granularity when depositing um, data, especially if it's their first time to do that. Um, this is a key aspect, especially when discussing generalist um, repositories. Uh, where um, uh, um, the researchers are able to deposit data uh, however they, 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 they want. Uh, so they are able to decide the level of granularity. So a more stringent set of guidelines um, that could be either completely general or more domain specific, depending on, on the repository or the structure of it, uh, might be very useful in that case. Another point um, is that um, data deposition tends to happen in two ways. One is, uh, if it's a curated data set, it might have a, a more um, um, stepwise process. So subsets, uh, smaller pieces of the whole data set um, may be deposited. Um, so the granular might be this, uh, this part, which also relates also to a bit more work. Uh, but on the other hand, um, in, in, uh, in a large um, number of cases, people start thinking about the position when they reach the end of this, uh, of this uh, research cycle. Uh, and at that point, uh, they might, uh, and depending on the repository, they might be requested to deposit information in, they may come across pieces of information or, or structures that they have not yet considered. Yeah. So again, um, having some guidelines to address this particular aspect might be uh, a bit useful. Uh, I think that's the short version. Um, we try to keep a few notes there, so it would be um, a, a more sort of substantial um, thoughts there. So that's it. Great, thank you. So we have about um, 10 minutes left. I think we probably have a couple minutes for discussion and then we're gonna talk about wrap up and next steps. Irina, I'll yeah. turn to you. So um, I, I was going to do a poll, but the poll functionality doesn't exist, but I thought maybe we can just do it using the uh, reactions. So I'm going to go through um, the different, those five uh, cases that we kind of just went through. through. There's five aspects of uh, impacts granularity has, and just just get some sense about what of those uh, this group thinks is the most important or urgent to address. Um, so I'm just going to ask you to use the React button that you have at the bottom, and and just maybe uh, use a thumbs up if, when when I say the aspect if you think that is the most important one, and I'll just do a quick uh, visual scan. There's enough that I can count. So if you think that the access is the most important, please do a thumbs up. Okay, no thumbs up on that one. If you think that the discovery or the, sorry, the, I had this backwards, the discovery is the most important aspect, um, please put your thumb up. Okay, so we have two, no, three. Okay, now we have lots more. I think there was like five. 
for discovery. And then if you think that the um, the interoperability would be the, the most important one, uh, please put your thumb up. I don't actually see that, but that's one I think about a lot. Actually, I'm putting my thumb up there because that's the one I worry about. Um, and then for citation, uh, how, how many do we have for interoperability? Well, one, because I'm the only one. Uh, it was also me as well, so that's oh. two. OK. Um, then for citation, sorry, it's the thumbs up don't last that long, so I might miss them. OK. We have at least one, looks like one. And then for curation and deposit. So it looks like two at least. Okay, so, so I mean, this isn't a big enough group to be really statistically relevant. So this is the kind of things maybe we'll look to include in our survey for sure, but um, that's that's useful to know at this point. Um, and then, uh, like, there are, you know, all these different ways that groups are doing granularity decisions right now, both our repositories and then the individual researchers that might be depositing in these generalist repositories. But how important is it really that we're consistent? I mean, I think if we're here, we think it is important to be consistent, um, or at least to have guidelines. But is there any kind of counter um, statements to that? Like, I think we're all here because they, we've recognized problems that a free for all notion of these granularity concepts isn't really working or doesn't allow for other potential to emerge like meaning of site of metrics from citations or ability for to harvest and fuse data in consistent ways so okay a few people in the chat um echoed the value of guidelines and standards okay so this is important um i'm not i guess we don't really have too much time to get into additional needs or use cases but no. certainly um you can put them in the google doc or uh we'll, obviously this is something we've plan to draw on in the working group um, through our work plan. So there's certainly going to be more opportunity for that. Um, and then we do have that list of RDA groups in the uh, draft statement. So please have a look if you think that there's ones that we've missed um, or even groups outside of the RDA that you think we should consult with and or either consult with or look at some of the outputs that they've put out, that would be useful. So just in the interest of time, I think I'll move along to the next part with Katie. Okay, so I can go next if you want. So this is just a representation of what I said verbally before that we're going through two rounds of feedback, thinking about this developing this working group and the initial informal feedback on the key statement. And we have this session encouraging people to give any feedback on this for this first round by the end of November. And then, and oh, this is the RDA endorsement process. So we're still within this box one of sort of case statement development and the informal review. And then we would put together a formal case statement for then going through the formal endorsement process. And as I mentioned before, or I think maybe I actually neglected to mention at the beginning, if I don't, can't mention enough that we are actively seeking a co-chair that's a third co-chair to work with us from outside North America for diversity. And so the next actions for the group, I just mentioned that as well. And then thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who have already put yeses in the column for interest in the working group. I think it's actually the majority of the people on this call. So we get sort of quality, participants in the session, which is excellent. And so we will, someone, we had mentioned in the chat that RDA gave us a provisional sort of working group page that you're a working group in development, even if you're not formally endorsed. And so we'll be following up on that and getting uh, communication realms like an email list and things going. But thank you for 
thinking about it. And if you're in the maybe column, we're happy to have further conversations about that. So again, I encourage you to, for this round of November, take a look at the case statement, give feedback. I actually didn't double check as to how people would be able to, if you can comment on the document. So I'll check on that later, but certainly contact either of us if you have any questions or comments just about the process. Yeah, and, and if you had responded yes to wanting to join our working group on the attendance, we'll, we'll include you on when we schedule our next meetings, um, even prior to it being an actual working group. And I would also say that um, I just wanted to respond to Luke's uh, question here about databases providing DOI to dynamic data queries. So if you look at the RDA guidelines that came out of the data citations working group, um, it talks about this concept of like this query store which there's actually quite a few requirements um, in that recommendations that are related to the query store. And that query store is meant to be actually a local uh, query store within the data repository. So for instance, at Owen, Eric Roche Networks Canada, we have our own query store in our own database that we provide uh, the query PID to the users when they uh, download a data set. So we have the high level DOI of the, the data set and then a query PID from our own query store uh, that they that is given to them, but uh, um, I don't, and, and that's how the RDA uh, recommends. But there might be other ways that are um, being done. Um, so I'm not sure if that's what you were getting at, but um, I'm not sure, or if you've read that document. Uh, what are these other comments? Um, Yeah, so I think I think for sure we need to kind of look at that uh, recommendations from that working group for sure. So any other questions or comments just about the process and what we're doing next and thinking about the working group. Okay, so I, I'll try to turn on my video again at the risk of having my audio go just to say goodbye. But thank you so much, everybody, for joining, for your interest in this. And it's a really, as we've talked about, it's a really interesting topic because it touches on so many different things. So do think about how you'd like to be involved, give feedback. And as Raina said, we will be in touch formally for our next stages. So best wishes, everybody, and see you at maybe at the final close later. Thanks so much, Katie. Oh, and, and again, and so again, thank you to all the groups in the task force who helped us, all the people whose name was on the second page that helped us to get to this point. So thank and you again, people, all. And the people earlier along on the path, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah.